welcome to my channel. My name is Rhonda and I'm also known as Sparkly One. And I'm going to be painting this kitchen. So as you can see, my kitchen is a little dated. Uh, we bought this house 15 years ago, brand new. And I've always loved white cabinets and I thought, well, I, you know, the wood was in at the time and it was beautiful back then, but now I really think that I want the white back again. So I'm going to be um, tackling this huge feat <laughs> and I am excited about this but I'm kind of not looking forward to it because it's going to take a few weeks to get it done. Now this kitchen is very large it's a 16 foot this one wall over here is 16 feet and I have a butler's pantry and I also have a center island and where my refrigerator is that um, area over there is 18 feet long. I also wanted to show that this is my whole entire family room and kitchen area. So as you can see, we've updated this area. We did the white built in. We've had that since we moved in. We did it that way and that looks great. We're going to be getting new couches soon because we're going to be getting more of the gray farmhouse look. The sun has faded these couches a lot. so. They're not quite the color they used to be. Well, I think this is gonna match so well and it's gonna just look so much better. And uh, these cabinets over time have, you know, kind of turned a little bit more orange, I think. And if you are interested in learning how to paint your kitchen cabinets and not using chalk paint like everybody talks about, but using this amazing paint, it's called Bare Alkid Satin Enamel. And I've used that before on my dining room table and I just loved it. I thought it looked beautiful. It was easy to paint. So to get started, I'm gonna show you the supplies that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna start with my center island and then I'm gonna do that complete before I finish the cabinets. So it's such a big kitchen, I really need to take it one step at a time. And I think that's really gonna help a lot. So anyway, I'm gonna show you my supplies and let's go ahead and get started. Wish me luck, bye. These are the supplies that you're gonna need if you're gonna paint your kitchen. I know it looks like a lot, but I'll explain as I go along. So let me use my paint stick as a pointer. So this right here um, is the caulking removal tool and the caulking tool. So right here it says that um, I won't need this one to remove caulking because I don't have any caulking um, on the cabinets, but I think that I'm probably going to have to fill up these areas. Let me show you these areas right here. This is all recessed in here. And so there's like these little cracks in here that I'm probably going to have to fill in with um, some caulking. And look, I have these turned legs. I mean, I have a lot of stuff going on. Um, I won't be caulking those, of course, but as you can see right here in the cracks, see, I might have to fill those in. So I just wanted to be prepared and have the caulking tool on, on hand. And also I have this, which is a pour and store lid, and I've used that in my other videos, and it's just has this, it has this little um, pour spout, and you just snap it onto the can, and then you have zero mess. It's amazing. So I highly recommend that. It's only a couple dollars. Um, and this is a plastic drop cloth. I have three rolls of this so I can put that around wherever I need it. And then I have the Scott shop towels that I got from Costco. These work really great and I highly recommend them because they're basically lint free. They don't leave any lint, whereas a paper towel does. And then I also have the blue painter's tape. This one's for trim and baseboards, which I thought would be great for the cabinets. I have crud cutter, and this crud cutter is concentrated degreaser, which is the one I used on the cabinets for my bathrooms. And then this is the kitchen degreaser. So they have different types, but I probably will be using this one uh, for the cabinets. And then also I'm using rollers. So usually I use a sponge roller, but in this case, I believe I'm gonna use the mini roller or the micro mini, the micro fiber. fiber. The microfiber roller, I'm going to try that, or the woven um, roller. I'm not sure exactly which one's going to work better, but generally I like to use a brush, but I'm going to be using one of those. Um, and then I bought all of these really cool brushes. So this is a square brush right here, and see how it's all chiseled like that? It's amazing. So I think that would be really good to get into all those nooks and crannies that I need. This is a two inch chiseled wedge brush, which has also a great finish. 
I mean a great um, chiseled edge. And then I like to use a two inch angled brush for everything. I let, that's what I use all the time. And then I wanted to show you this. So this is a builder's paper right here. And I'm gonna use this on my countertops so I don't get any paint on anything. As you can see over there, that's all the counters. And then I have another counter on this side. And then I have this um, handy paint cup. As you can tell, I've used it before, but it does have a handle on it. It also has a magnetic strip right there, which holds your brush. And then I'm using primer, the bullseye one, two, three, and it says that it sticks to all surfaces without sanding. And it, you can, it dries in one hour. You can use it with oil base or water base. And then here's the paint that I'm using, which is the Bare Urethane Alkyd Sat Satin Enamel, which I love, and this is in Swiss Coffee. This I highly recommend right here. This is a pad for gardening. And of course, since I'm gonna be doing a lot of work on the ground, I feel like I really need that and a pair of gloves. So other than that, the only thing that's not on this table is the um, caulking. And so I will be putting that um, on the screen too if I, if I end up using it. So anyway, there's all my supplies. And one thing I'm gonna point out are these turned legs. So I have four on this big center island and then I have two over there on the butler's pantry and then I have two I have two over here at the sink so I'm gonna go ahead and try to take those off hopefully I can get them out because it would be much easier to paint with them being removed I'm gonna start on the center island and I have the tongue and groove um, bead board right here so that's gonna be kind of a pain to go in and out of all those crevices but I think it'll look really pretty. And I'm gonna remove the chairs and then I'm gonna paint the whole entire thing. Hopefully today I will get the primer on, but I do have to clean them and tape the floor. And that's one thing I wanted to show you. So down here on the floor, I have the grout right up next to the kickboard down there. And that's why I have the knee pad that I have for gardening. So I could get down there and I have to go all the way around the whole entire kitchen. That's how it is. And it's a lot of work, but I'm gonna get it done. So let's go ahead and clean these cabinets. that I was telling you about the leg post right there the turn legs and all I did was go inside the cabinet and I removed three screws and I can pull it right out look at that so I'm super excited because oh <laughs> come out come out it came out I put it back in so I know it comes out see it comes out yay so everything that's on this side of my um, center island including that drawer that cabinet door that's the only one that comes off those other two do not come off and I have another one on the other side which will come off so I'll put these right here instead of numbering them and then for this other side I have two cabinet doors there and a drawer and I have two cabinet doors in the middle and I'll use I'll put the ones that go below the stove on top of the stove right there and then those two in the drawer right there so I know where they go I don't have to number them and then I'm going to go ahead and start priming and then I'm going to be painting so I'm so excited hopefully I can get two coats of primer on this today and so far I've been at this almost two hours to clean it and take everything apart and I'm moving on in the light you can see like this one has a bunch of scratches and you know I just want to make sure everything's super clean and I'm cleaning all the legs the turned legs because they're really dusty so you just make sure everything is super clean I already took off all the hardware which I just left inside of the cabinet and 
I left the ones for the drawers in the drawers. And I am not painting the inside of the cabinets, just so you know. Now I have to go around and clean all the frames, just like this. And pay special attention to cleaning where the knobs were because where your fingers are always touching those, they're very greasy. So that's very important. Tool right here was great. This was perfect for doing all of the taping on the floor. So I highly recommend using this. see I haven't even painted um, any of the legs or any of the drawers or doors so that will be my job today and hopefully I can get it done and put it back together these turned legs it's a little bit difficult because of course they're round it's kind of like painting a baseball bat but you do need to use a brush so you can get into those little um, areas so I'm just gonna let these dry and then I'm gonna paint the very top portion after I let them dry Okay, this is day two and as you can see I've got the center island almost painted. I have one more coat of paint to put on this entire area and what I did is that I put on two coats of primer and I also put on one coat of paint at this point. So I just wanted to show a few different ways of how to paint the doors. Okay. So I'm finding that the probably the easiest way for me is to take my sponge roller and go in all of these nooks and crannies just like with a ton of paint, like just put a whole bunch on your roller like this and then just go all the way around kind of quickly and kind of gob it on there. Okay. Let's see. Make sure that you don't leave any thin spots because it dries pretty quickly. So you just kind of go around like this. And then you can put it a little more, kind of smoosh it around the sides, onto the top, all the way around. Okay, so for me, this is just one of the million ways that I've done it. Okay, we have it all on. My favorite brush is this really um, little brush. I don't, I can't, I'll show you a picture of what it's called. Then I just go around and really cram it into these corners. Um, this, these cabinets, they have so many nooks and crannies, I swear. I have <laughs> used every single brush I bought and they've all come in handy. I'll, I'll post a picture of all of those brushes that I use throughout this process. And you just kind of have to do what works best for you. But this is what's done really well for me. This goes faster than any other technique. I've tried it all. And um, I think that 
if you can do this quickly, then I think you're gonna be a happy camper. So you just have to make sure that you keep getting it into all of these areas where the nooks and crannies are. And I will probably be caulking all of this later once I get them all up on the cabinets and painted and then I can kind of see where the paint didn't fill in on some of the cracks, then I'll use the caulking. But for now, I just my goal is just to get them up on the, the cabinets and just see that all of it looks like. And this is day eight that I'm actually showing you this. And I've been working at least eight hours a day on this, but um, it's an exhausting process, but I'm just trying to get it done like a marathon because I just don't want to wait weeks and weeks until I can enjoy my kitchen. And as we know, the kitchen is the heart of the home. So anyway, this, as you can see, this small brush, as I'm pulling the strokes like this, I can push the paint down, but not too hard, and just drag it to have a nice, even uh, brush strokes. And you kind of have to use your whole arm and just rock back and forth with your feet, you know, whatever works for you. And of course, I got little pieces of dust or something in there. But when I'm done with my final coat, which this is my first coat of paint, so I'm doing two coats of primer, two coats of paint. And when I'm done with all of it, once it's hanging on the doors, I'll reassess the situation and I'll see if I need to sand them down a little bit. Because sometimes you do, you have to just sand them, just a really fine sandpaper. But um, with that being said, this is it. This is how I do this in the quickest way possible. And I hope that helps you. But there are brush strokes, and what I'm going to do is probably sand this coat and then put on the final coat. And I think that will make it look really, really nice. So what I'm going to do for my final coat is I'm going to sand with this 220 fine um, 3M sanding block. And I'm going to just lightly sand the surfaces. pieces after you've sanded them make sure that you use a damp shop towel you know those blue towels I showed you and just wipe down all of the dust this is my kitchen this morning as you can see the Sun is coming in and it looks so pretty I woke up and I went oh my gosh I love this so much it's just beautiful and with one more coat it's gonna just look amazing so I'm gonna be doing that right now. So I'll be right back with the results of the second coat. Okay, so I wanted to show you this. This is the center island at the base of my pedestal where the paint ran. And I took a heavier grit sandpaper and I sanded it. Now, of course it chipped off because it's not cured. So when you are doing stuff like this and you find that to be the case, don't worry about it because it will cure after about, um, I'm gonna say give it a month, two weeks to a month. It's gonna cure really hard and really nice and that happened in my bathroom upstairs. I did the same thing. I scraped it all off um, because I was doing a test and I thought, oh no, it's not gonna work. And I didn't even use primer on that one. And what happened was is that I went back in with um, the color and I the, with the paint I went back in with the paint and I did I did repaint it and it dried super hard to a great finish and I'm not even worried about it. So if you see any of these types of things going on, even though you've done two coats of primer, two coats of paint, you can touch this up with the paint and just don't worry about it. So just move on and do the rest of your kitchen. So I'm talking about this brush right here. It's a square brush and it works great for all of these areas that are recessed. And you just go in here and you push them into the corners and you can paint so much easier this way. And then on these recessed panels, you're just gonna want to go into all of the areas that are recessed first and then go back in with a roller or a brush 
and I'll show you that in a second. Then I use this brush, which is an angled brush, and you can also use it for that area if you prefer. And then you can just use it like that. Then what I do is I use the roller, and I go back in like this, and I put that all over the panel, and I use this angled brush, and I just brush down. Brush in one direction. It really helps, you know, either up or down. Okay, I know this is a little hard to see, but I just wanted to tell you that this little brush right here works great on this area right here. So you have to really push and pull to get the paint into the grooves. So I highly recommend this little brush here in conjunction with the other brushes because you're going to use all of them. And after I've done that, I go back in with my roller and I just push all the paint right on top. And then I go back in with this brush, which is my angled brush, and I just smooth it out. And just try to get back into those grooves if there's any drips. Then I take my roller and then I do the outside edges. And I, I take a wet paintbrush and I do it again. without the paint and you can always come back later as it's drying just come back and make sure that all these drips are taken care of if you see any drips just go back in and smooth them out with your pointy end of your brush and since I'm not painting the inside of the cabinet so I just want to show you here so you can use a roller and you're just gonna go up and down and paint right on that space. Just use a wet cloth to wipe down any of the edges if it gets on the inside and do that immediately. helpful tip I just wanted to talk about so you don't have to clean your pan is let it sit overnight and then you can just peel the paint off of the pan so this really helps to save water and also a lot of um, toxic chemicals into our environment so you just peel it off I'll close it. so this is what I like to do put everything into ziplocs so I don't have to wash them each time um, I will wash them every two days, so just so I have a fresh brush. I do the same with the rollers. I don't change these out. I just keep those in there. I don't wash them. Oh, yeah, and then on top of my stove, I put a piece of wood so I can use that as my workstation, too, so the, um, it doesn't get wobbly on the grates. 
Another helpful tip is to label the inside of your cabinets with painter's tape and just write on them. Oh, and of course, if you're painting the inside of your cabinet doors, you're going to want to take out those hinges and underneath that metal, you can just put um, a number or whatever symbol you want. This is what I've done today. It looks like a big disaster, doesn't it? Um, anyway, so yeah, this is just primer and it's only one coat, kind of a sloppy job. It looks terrible on this first coat, but it always looks better on the second coat. And I think that you could get away with one coat if you don't do it so sparse <laughs> like I did. But I did run into an issue, and it's right here. And this is the one of the turn legs, actually two of them. And the installers of the cabinets actually put um, nails right through here. So they went right in here, and they were just, you know, with a nail gun. So in order to get those out, I would have to use a saw in between this little crack and I think that's pretty much impossible so I am not going to be removing those I have no idea how I'm going to paint in those areas behind there maybe just with a small round brush or something but it's not going to be fun I can tell you that and as you can see this is the other leg and I still have all of that to do and all of that so I'm thinking in two to three more days I'll have this finished, but I just wanted to update you right at this point. It's a lot of work and I'm tired of going to bed. Good night. Some of the cabinet doors, you might find that there are some things that just don't wipe off. So make sure that you get a really fine sand paper or block like this one that I showed you before, the 220 by 3M. And just sand a little bit to get those hard to remove areas off. And I think it's just grease and grime over time. Well, these doors are probably the most used. So just make sure that you sand those down lightly and then wipe them really good. And then you can go on and grind them.
Okay, so here it is. And those are primed as you can tell. And the ones over here, right here, those are all painted. So, except for the drawers, those drawers. So I have to finish that. Of course, the whole entire kitchen, that's all primed. And see all these doors, and that's all primed, that's all primed, that's all primed. And I have two more tables full of doors. And I have to take off all of the ones that are on the cabinet and still finish those. So I'm moving along, I'm hoping today or tomorrow. day nine painting my kitchen and I finished this corner over here this upper cabinet area oh, yes and I took off the tape around the microwave and it looks so pretty so I can't wait to finish the rest of this so I'm doing that today and maybe tomorrow I'll probably get it done today what is what I'm hoping for so <laughs> so far so good I'm very excited that's all finished there and I just have some of the uppers and a few more things. I gotta put the legs on. So I am doing good. I'm exhausted, but I'm doing good. So let's continue. Okay, so this is day 10 and as you can see I put some of the doors on and the drawers in and I'm still working on the longer doors I still have to paint the side cabinets right there and right there and then I have to touch up other areas so I think I'm doing pretty good and I just wanted to let you know that this paint right here I've used almost one gallon I think I have to buy another gallon. I thought I could get away with one gallon, but since I do have to paint up here and on the sides, and that's probably pretty much it, pretty much it other than um, some touch up. So let me put this kitchen together and I'll show you the final product. I'm so excited. So here's the kitchen. I just took all the tape off at the base down here and I put all the cabinet doors on. There's one still open over there, which I have to adjust. And then there's all that, that. See, as you can see, I still have some stuff to do. And I have to put the legs back on. And here's, ugh, I'm out of breath. The cabinet, and I gotta put those two on. I still have to finish around these legs they wouldn't come out so I had to go in with that little tiny brush in all of those areas doesn't look too pretty but nobody will even notice and then right here I have to paint and over here I have to paint and that's all the paint I needed for 
I see that's my one gallon that I use so now I need another gallon just to paint those two areas but I'm going to use it for a lot of other things so that's awesome but anyway there it is hope you like it